Hey, this is Rod Cleef, and you are listening to the Mailbox Money Show with Bronson Hill. All right, so I'm super excited for this episode. You're going to love this one. This guy is like liquid energy and courage and you know, personal development and life change. Like if you just like listen to this episode like 10 times, it will just change your life because he gives so many nuggets about how we go from being homeless, which is what happened in his life around the time I met him, um, to being a multi, multi millionaire doing all kinds of big deals and living his dream life. So when I find people like this, I try to get around them. So you're going to love this interview with Sterling Griffin. Uh, amazing. He was Sterling capital does all types of commercial deals, particularly in the medical space and triple triple net, and also had a coaching business. He's a fitness guy. He's, he's like me, but instead of a runner, he just, he bulks up. And, uh, anyway, you're going to love this interview. Let's jump in. All right. So I am here with Sterling Griffin from Sterling Capital. We've known each other for quite a while, probably almost 10 years. And we met uh, when Sterling was in a very different place of life. And one of the reasons I wanted to have him on the show is he's just super inspirational. He went from being homeless uh, to basically having a multiple seven figure exit just a few years later. And just the way he's somebody that I really admire. We spent some time together recently and just his mindset of how he approaches things. And he's just done all kinds of stuff, both in the coaching space. And now he's, uh, just, you know, invested a lot of his own money in uh, commercial real estate and he's wants to help others. So Sterling, welcome. How are you today, man? Man, I am so excited to do this specific interview. I do, I do a lot of interviews, to talk about my work and to get to meet with someone and do this with someone who knew me when, I mean, it's such a, it's such a, a deep pleasure to know, to have someone know you before you are the thing that you're really proud of today. I mean, you know, knew me back when I was at really the lowest point in my life. We didn't talk about it then. I wasn't like super open about how my life had fallen apart, but, but you did know me and you, and you've kind of been able to be there at least from a distance throughout this entire journey. And so I'm really, I'm really, really glad. I feel really connected to this specific moment with you where we get to share that with. with Yeah, it is kind of unique, man. I know we didn't, uh, you know, we actually met in kind of a a faith setting and at a church thing. And, um, you know, and again, I know you've, you have some, uh, you know, we have different beliefs on how we approach things, but I think what we share is that common belief that um, everything works together, right? Everything is like, the bigger the challenge or the bigger the obstacle, the better the view is on the other side, right? Like it's just, and and, and you're just an amazing example of that and things in my own life. The biggest challenges I've gone through have really created the the, the greatest successes. And people look at you and they say, oh man, Sterling, you're an overnight success. Look at this. And you're like, you weren't with me in the car. You weren't, you know, like all that, all that process. Can you tell a little bit of the story, kind of how you, how you got there and what your mindset was and, and just kind of how you, you know, just take us back to that, you know, when you were, homeless and you were living in your car. Yeah. My journey starts about eight years ago, a little over eight years ago now where I was totally and completely depressed actually. And, um, I think depression is really marked by a a sense of hopelessness. Like things can't get better no matter what you try, no matter who you're around. It just, there's nothing you can do. There's a sense of helplessness Mm. there. And, that had come for me on the back of leaving my previous career, which was as an evangelical pastor. So I'd had this mission for my life. I'm going to help people change their lives within a faith-based context and hopefully improve their lives for now, but then also connect them to an afterlife where they can where they can live forever in, in, a, in heaven. And so that was the driving obsession of my life. I'd become a Christian when I was 16 years old. It had, it had brought meaning to my life, it brought love and connection to my life. Where previously, I felt very much like an outcast. I felt um, very, quite frankly, unlovable. Mm. And and faith gave me a sense of I am lovable. Like my life does matter. Someone does care about me, and there are people that care about me. But then, when I was twenty four, while I was actually in seminary school, just down the street from where you live at Fuller Theological Seminary in Pasadena, mm-hmm. California, I realized that career wasn't for me. And in fact, that particular belief structure, that belief system no longer was for me either. I don't have anything bad to say about that faith community or the people that were with me or or even believing that. It just, I realized it wasn't mine and not anymore. And when that happened, I I lost my sense of meaning or purpose for, for living. And so I went down this dark path of just like not being able to keep a job, sleeping in bed all day long, just like trying to distract myself from my pain and my sense of aimlessness. 
And that culminated in October of 2015 of me actually moving into my car, my Honda Accord, because I could no longer afford the $250 a month rent to be the fifth in a two bedroom, 400 square foot apartment where I was sleeping on the floor of the living room. Wow. What changed it all, what brought me out of that place was actually uh, discovering this little app on our phones. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's, it says podcasts on <laughs> a little purple yeah. app on our iPhones. At the time, podcasts weren't a feature of our culture, and obviously right. they are today. So right. I had really not ever heard someone talk about a podcast, but I just saw it on my phone. So I'm like, oh, this is free click. And then I start looking at the categories. I see one category called self-help. And I'm like, oh, that's that's perfect for me. I could use some help right now. Right. So I click on that and I start listening to the episodes. In one episode, I discovered this guy named Tony Robbins. And at the time, Tony was promoting his newest book, which was called Money Master the Game. It's actually a financial wellness book. Yeah. So I'm listening to this guy speak and he's sharing story after story of how his life where he came from absolutely dirt poor nothing to now be interviewing billionaires about how they've grown billions and he's got hundreds of millions of dollars. And I'm like, totally blown away by this man. Well, yeah. come to find out looking into him, he had an event that was coming up in just a few weeks in Los Angeles, which was his flagship event, Unleash the Power Within. And so instead of paying the last month of rent that I had available at 250 bucks, I chose instead to take that money and invest it to buy a ticket to see Tony Robbins live wow. because in my mind, I'm thinking, I don't have the answers to change my life. I got to get in a room where yeah. this guy can give me some of those answers. So, so I sign up and it's, and we talked about this. I, you haven't gone yet to see Tony Robbins live, but it's in I your had, I have, I have. Yeah, I went, yeah, I went, I went a year ago. That's where I decided to write my book. Was it? Oh, oh that's right. Yes. Ago. We talked yeah. about that. that was like yeah, a yeah. huge catalyst for you. Okay, great. Yeah. So yeah. we share that. Yeah. So for me, that it's like 50 hours. It's it's like a personal development rock concert, 12 hours a day for four days. Yeah. And on the third day, Tony Robbins says, um, listen, if you take nothing else from this entire event, but what I'm about to share with you, just this one single phrase and you use it, you apply it in your life and you can literally forget everything else I'm about to share with you and you will get your money's worth. So of course, I mean, where I am in my life, I'm like leaning in, I'm on the edge, the physical literal edge of my seat saying, pen to paper, Tony, give me the answer, please. I got to have it. And he leans in and quietly says over the microphone, proximity is power. And who you surround yourself with is who you become. He went on to explain that the five people closest to you really are going to determine your status in every area of life. So not uh, this applies financially. Like if you want to be richer, get around richer people. If you want to be happy, though, you need to get around happy people. If you want to be ambitious, you want to believe and create more for your life, yeah, yeah. then get around people that want more. And, and I'm like, no wonder I'm depressed. I'm around depressed people. No wonder I don't have ambition or don't have a sense of hope. Like, so are the people I'm talking to the most. And so what shifted for me in that moment was I got to get around whatever it takes. I got to get around people that want more out of life, that are driven towards it, and get around people that have already achieved the thing that I want. As Tony Robbins says multiple times throughout the event, and everywhere he goes, he says it, success leaves clues. And so if you want to achieve something greater, you can get there faster and easier if you just relate to or get in relationship with somebody that already has it. So with that main, yeah. those two main focuses, Bronson, over the next two years. Well, can we slow you down one sec? Let's slow you down one sec, because I know you're going to like keep going and we're going to have an amazing chat. But I want to pause here because you said so many things that are like amazing, right? Because no matter where you're at, so anybody listening, uh, we all go through different stages of life. And I think that um, like what Tony said, and I love Tony. I went to Tony for the first time a year ago, and that's where I made the decision. He said, it's in your moments of decision that your destiny is shaped. It's just by you deciding. I was like, okay, I'm going to leave my job in three years. I'm going to do this. I'm going to write a book, whatever it is. And all this stuff happened. And so it's the decision. But the thing about the proximity is power and being in the room. I tell people that no matter where you are in life, if you're in the room with people that are ahead of you in the area you want to grow in, if you want to be better at, you know, you want to be stronger and be better at health. If you hang out with Sterling, you're going to get stronger, man. You've, you're like a beast, dude. You're just like, you're, you're huge. If you want to do Spartan races, hang out with me. But if yeah. you want to, uh, I mean, whatever it is you want to do, if you want to get more wealthy, you just, and you can literally take it in just about every area of life that like five people, what's the, you know, what, who are the five people? What's their spirituality? What's their wealth? What's their mindset? What's their, uh, you know, what are they focused on? What are they thinking about? What's their attitude? And you'll get that. And so a lot of times like you and I, and we pay to be in rooms 
where you get amazing people. And like, why would you pay 10, 20, 30, 50 K or more to be in rooms, but it changes everything. Right. And so I know we're going to get into that in a little bit. Um, can you talk maybe actually just, can you, before you get on the next part of your story, where you built your business and different things, who were some of the, like, how did that change for you kind of right after that? Like, who are the people that you said, I, I need to obviously Tony Robbins is one because you went to Tony Robbins, but were there people like close in your life that you were able to like kind of reach out to or kind of build a closer relationship with? Yeah. So the first, the first places that I found friends were literally two places. It was personal development courses. So online courses have communities attached to them, whether they be Facebook groups or online forums, and then also in-person events. I knew that if I paid or just showed up, even to the free ones, to personal development events, like the people that go are the people that are successful. Like if you want to be around successful people, just go to personal growth events because those people, people that want to be better are already great in general. Okay. So for me, literally some of the people that I met at that Tony Robbins event became people that I was like, I'm going to hang out with this person. Like, even if they're already so much more successful than me, my mindset was the way that you build relationship with somebody is you find ways to add value. Okay. So there's all, there's obvious value with somebody that's of a similar status as you. So for example, if you want to be around a millionaire and you're already a millionaire, like it's, it's already a given that they'd want to probably be around you because you have a similar lifestyle. You're at a similar place in life in the way of thinking. But let's say that you're only worth hundred grand and you want to be around somebody that's worth 10 million. Well, there's not an obvious status alignment between you two. So you've got to find ways to add value to increase your status in their mind. So that could be that you're, let's say they're out of shape and you can help them with nutrition tips, with finding them a chef, with like working out with them and training them. For me, one of the first relationships I built with somebody that was massively more successful than me was actually Lewis Howes. So Lewis Howes was somebody that I set an intention. I'm going to befriend him again when I had nothing, when I was still homeless. And the way that I did that was I I started trying to find people to connect him with for his podcast because I, because he actually says on his podcast, like one of the ways that he built relationships with people that were more successful than him was he would find ways to connect them, find ways to give them resources for whatever they needed help with. And so I ended up, it's, it's a longer story than we're going to have time for in this show, but I ended up befriending Logan Paul. Okay. Who was already a big influencer by that time back in 2016. And I connected him with Lewis via Snapchat because he into anyone messages on Snapchat at that time. And then he was like, yes, I would love to have Logan on the show. They went on the show together. That show went live in 2016. And then Lewis was like, let's hang out. Let's get together. And I trained him for a few sessions physically, like with personal yeah. training, because that was, again, my business. Yeah. At that and he, he was a pro athlete, right? He was a pro athlete for a pro while. Athlete, yeah, exactly. Okay, but wow, he was no yeah. longer a pro athlete. Yeah. And so he kind of got out of shape. Uh, you know, I'm not saying yeah. he was. He was out of shape, but he wasn't in pro athlete anymore. Yeah, right. He had a different career. And so he loved me training. And he actually gave me a testimonial video that I used that brought me lots of clients. It was, wow. was just me doing a few free sessions with him. It was a celebrity testimonial. Yeah. It completely put me on a different stratosphere in business. So well, that, that's amazing. You know, you brought up a principle here. And again, you know, we have people that are passive investors that listen to the show, the Mailbox Money Show. Some people are active, but it's amazing when you can connect people, you can be a connector. And I've realized like we did our live events in LA recently, we had 170 people there and, and I would, I would go around and be like, Hey, you should meet this person who invests in this area. You should meet this person who's, who's, who's got a deal and looking for money. You should do this. And it's amazing when you become a connector, like people want to know you, they want to hang out with you and they so appreciate it because someone like in that position, um, you know, they kind of have a lot of what they need. People show up, Hey man, how can I help you Lewis? Right. It's like, Great. Well, what, you know, people come up to you. How can I help you, Sterling? You're like, okay, well, that's, that doesn't mean anything. Right. But they're like thinking about you as a person in your business and what you need. And they're like, oh, I'm going to help connect you with this because this is actually going to be a powerful relationship. And people that are really successful really appreciate when you connect them with other successful people. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Especially when that, when that is connected to a very obvious or specific need for them. So, so there's always ways. One of the decisions I made that Tony actually helped me with at that live event is that I can form a relationship with anyone that I desire to. I can form a relationship with anyone that I desire to. And what that means is the way that you find a way to, to build a relationship is you find a way to add value. And I just had it in my mind. I don't know. It was kind of a crazed thought, but like whatever problem someone has, I will figure out a way. Whatever problem someone has, I will figure out a way. And that mindset enabled me to solve problems that quite frankly, I didn't have any, any business solving. And, and over the next couple of years, as a result of getting into rooms with other ambitious people that wanted more, and by getting in relationship with mentors, I, I literally became a net worth millionaire through the success of that first business. 
Yeah, it, it's really is incredible. I mean, if you and and uh, you just described the biggest nugget there. People ask, you know, how did I, you know, raise forty million dollars over a few years? How did I quit my corporate job? How did I do all? How did how did you go from homeless to being a multi multi millionaire and having you know, living the life that you want to live? And it's just that is you found a way to create value. And even Jim Rohn, you're probably familiar with Jim Rohn, uh, you know, make yourself valuable to valuable people. And so Mm -hmm. when you hang out with valuable people and, and you're in the room and then you're not thinking like, Hey, I want, I want to get something from this person, which everybody goes to influencers and is like, I want to, I want a picture. I want to, Hey, how can I sir? How can I do something that would be helpful to you? It's amazing what opens up. So do that. I think that's a nugget there. You just dropped. That's amazing. So take us, uh, take us to a little more of your story. How did you get from, uh, so again, you got some mindset stuff figured out. I know you did some, some coat, you did a coaching business. Tell us about that. And then tell us about your kind of foray into real estate and kind of how that started. Yeah. So after my initial success in my coaching business, I had a number of other people reaching out saying, Hey, I knew that you were totally broke. Not that long ago. Can you help me grow my coaching business? And so I transitioned about midway through my second year to helping other trainers, some gym owners to grow online businesses. And and that's when my, my career really took off. In my first year, I made about 285,000. In my second year, I was making really good money, about 40, 50 grand a month. But then by the end of that year, I made $1.68 million with with that new business. And so the business continued to grow multiple seven figures every year until I sold it at the end of 2020. And the reason why I did that is because I was ready for a new challenge. Like I was happy with what I'd done, but I wanted to move into a bigger sphere. I felt like coaching, especially in that specific vertical, was was no longer like really challenging me where I could really expand and use my skills to their highest and best ability. And plus, I'd heard about real estate investing, was really curious about learning how to grow my wealth in a passive way. So I sold the business and I did what I did at the beginning of my coaching business at that time. Again, following those same principles of get around successful people and hire mentors. I joined a real estate mastermind because I figured there are already people that have good deals, already people know how to look at these deals. I just need to get in a relationship with them. Yeah. So I started, I, I joined a mastermind that's actually local here in Austin. It's called Go Abundance. And they have events around the United States, but it's all male millionaires. That's the group. So I was like, okay, there's some cool people here. So I started looking at deals. And as you know, looking at real estate deals, 95% of what you're looking at is going to be multifamily deals. Okay. And there's nothing wrong with that. But for whatever reason, that just brought a red flag to me when I started seeing almost every deal is this way. And the reason why is because look, I'm just not that smart. Like I'm not going to be able to find some better way to do this deal that everybody else is already doing. I get to find a space where people either don't understand it as well, or it's just not as popular and find my own way in it. So that's what led me to, there was like maybe two or 3% of that group of, you know, 600 guys that were doing some triple net investing. So this is like the most passive form of investing where you have a tenant inside of a building, it's commercial. So you have a tenant inside of a building and they agree to not only pay you rent, but agree to pay property taxes, your property maintenance, and your insurance. And that just sound, sounded like a dream. From the first moment I saw it, I was like, wow, I come from a very stressful business. I want to be able to do my due diligence, like learn about the deal, but then to put my money in and forget about it more or less for a long time. Okay. And just have it build on its own without my involvement. And so I started looking at deals. I bought my first deal from somebody that was a mentor in the group because he'd I bought so many off-market deals and he had a really good one for me. He's like, hey, if you want to learn about these kinds of deals, my best recommendation, because by the way, Bronson, there's not really like a coaching group for people that want to buy multi-million dollar deals in triple net. There, there's this like mastermind for that. Yeah. So I was like, if I want to do it, I just got to buy one and just figure, figure it out. out. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I did. And what happened was, is I got spoiled really quick, Bronson, to be honest with you, because after I bought this deal, I already had a tenant in place paying me. Well, they got acquired by a big public company and they extended their lease. These were not things I knew would happen on the front end of the deal. Right. Literally overnight, I'd added a million dollars to my net worth by, by accident. Wow. And after that, I was like, oh my gosh, how do I do this? How, how can I do this a thousand <laughs> more times? Of course. Well, it's not quite that simple. Not all deals work like that. We're just yeah, yeah. <laughs> have this happen. So I started looking at deals and little by little, I keep seeing these medical deals show up when I'm talking to brokers. I literally called a thousand brokers over the next year. Wow. Looking off-market deals. That's not an exaggeration. 1,000 phone calls. That's amazing. Just digging, 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 digging. And I start seeing these medical deals where they're either urgent cares or emergency rooms or pain management clinics, just these different types of deals. And for whatever reason, I hadn't heard people talking about them. But yet when I'm looking at the leases, I'm like, oh my gosh, 
There, there's no expenses. It's totally passive. The financials are really strong on these companies and they're signing long leases like 20 years at a time. Whereas most commercial deals, it's like two, three, maybe five years. Now we're looking at 20. These deals are amazing. Right. So I, I discovered this strategy and it's and it's only known by really developers where I can find it in, in the single tenant, in the triple net space. I can find a tenant that's already doing well financially. They've got great financials, yeah. so they're safe. And I'll say to them, hey, look, I'm going to buy you a building. I'm going to buy a building. I'm going to do all the build out for you to move in. Okay. A medical build out, which is expensive. And then in exchange, you're just going to sign a long-term 20 year lease for me. And I know that if I set it up, if I buy it, if I get it built, if I have good guarantees around it, then once that thing is built, once it's set up, it's going to sell for way more than my cost on doing it. So at first I did this with my own money because I was too scared to raise money from anybody else. Cause I'm like, I don't know if I get this strategy well enough. I do not want to lose anybody else's money. And thankfully I already have some money for my exit. So I'm just going to do it myself. Well, in that first year, I bought 18 and a half million worth of deals that were all medical, their urgent cares in an emergency room. And then, but in within the same year, I sold them because they were valued so much more at $25 million. Wow. So literally, if you do that math, it's a 40% IRR on every single one of the deals. Amazing. Amazing. And, yeah. That, that's incredible, man. You, you've shared a little bit of your, of your story and what you're doing. I think it's really unique. And I love a few things that you shared um, is that, you know, as an investor, if you're a passive investor or an active investor, if everybody's doing something, it's important to start doing other things because, you know, we started and we, we have our 200 million multifamily. We love multifamily. We're still looking at multifamily. We haven't done a, multi, a new multifamily deal in over a year, right? Because wow. we're just seeing other opportunities and other businesses like ATMs, car washes, oil and gas. And so what you're doing is you were just looking, where's the opportunity here? And you had money to be able to do it. And you found a way to even, uh, you know, in the areas you buy, you shorten some of the development time uh, significantly. So it doesn't take years, yeah. it takes months. And yeah. you can, and you've already got the tenant, you've already everything in place. And then I imagine you're able to kind of sell those off with triple net, or you're able to just do, and you get a much higher multiple than if you were to sell it to someone else. So it's amazing how, it's just funny how investing works. Cause you start with one thing, you're like, oh, this triple net thing sounds great. And then you found basically a way to create your own triple nets and then sell them. And basically to do that, and you're like, nobody else is doing this. Why aren't people doing this? But that's why the opportunity is there. So I think that's really, that's really awesome, man. Um, what advice do you have for people kind of getting started uh, as an investor? Uh, let's say they, they want to, you know, find their niche. They want to figure out what they should do. What are some things that kind of helps you on that path? Besides, I mean, I guess calling a thousand brokers will help too, but uh, what, what are some of the things that can help people? Yeah. Well, it depends on what kind of space you want to be in, right? So I, I think that whatever space you're going to be in, and I recommend being in commercial over single family just for so many reasons, just that it's way less competitive. There's way more upside. The deals are bigger and they're often way more secure, ironically, totally. because you can get these, these, like I more or less know what my valuation on my properties are going to be for several years in the future. And the reason why that is, is because, and I don't know exactly, because I don't know exactly what debt costs are going to be. And that's something that that can vary a lot. I don't know what inflation is exactly going to be, but there are things that I do know that other asset classes don't. Whereas, for example, I know what my income on my property is going to be for five years from now. Like I know exactly what it's going to be. So that's a variable I don't have to work out. Right, okay. Right. Over the next 20 years, like in multifamily, you kind of don't know year to year. You don't know how much more you can charge with your rent, you know, more or less roughly, but I have fewer variables that I have to work out. I'll say this. I have an entire guide that I walk people through. If let's say they want to be focused on medical. I, I'm not an expert on other kinds of properties, but I do know medical because this is an area where, first of all, I found was just not as competitive, but yet had really good demographics for the long term. Yeah. Where it's like we have an aging population, Bronson, like we've got 8.5% of the population in 2020 is that geriatric age. Okay, so that older yeah. population that's been the most on healthcare by 2050 in the US, that's trending to be 16.7% of the population. So the supply just does not currently meet the future demand. And yeah. so I just felt if I'm here, if I park right here, maybe in five years, Bronson, it's going to be like multifamily is today, super crowded. I think it will because the spreads are so good. They're so right. big. And so people are going to find out. People are going to flood into this space eventually. But for right now, we've got this sweet spot where you mentioned it. I can turn over deals and not take three, four years, five years, the way a multifamily operator has to take. I can turn deals over in 11 months or 15 yeah. months. 
And so I can turn over people's money like multiple times within five years. So they're able to compound the return in a greater way. But I would say this, if you're looking to make sure that your money is safe, wherever you park it, either passively, or you want to be an active investor, then like I have an off market deal streak. By the way, let me just say this real quick before I get into what to say next is please, for the love of God, if you are going to become an investor, buy deals off market. Okay, whatever asset class you are in, make it a point, make a decision. You are going to buy deals that are off market because once a deal gets onto the market, you want to be a seller of that kind of deal, (laughs) not a buyer. Because once there's a lot of eyes on it, the price gets driven up, especially if it's good. So if you're able to find things before the market knows about it and develop or just buy with a developer, then you're going to be able to capture greater spread than the market is able to find. So you want to be the guy selling to somebody that is not listening to this podcast right now and has this, and you want to be buying on the front end. So that's just one thing I'd recommend. And if you want like game plan tips on how to vet deals from a tenant side, from a location side, from a, from a developer side, from a guarantees side to protect your wealth, then my email list, I I give kind of all those blueprints step-by-step. Awesome, man. We're going to get into that too, how people can find you. Um, We got a few more minutes, man. I wanted you, you just, your story, man, is super inspirational and you've just done so many things. And I love just the time I spent with you, just that your attitude, your approach for toward people, the energy you bring. And it's, it's awesome, man. Uh, What's something I think, you know, in the personal development on the mindset piece, you think that would, could help someone if they feel stuck or they feel like, Hey, I'm just stuck in this job that I don't like, or, or I'm in a situation that like, I'd love to be where you're at, but like, I don't quite know how to get there. I mean, what, is there anything that you find besides getting in the room and doing, you know, that's obviously an incredible tip, but is there anything else that you could find would just be like, this could be a catalyst or even just this thought could really help? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. So I'm going to share with you one of the problems that people face that they may not be aware they're facing is if they're in a spot in life that they don't like, let's say they have a job that they don't like, let's say that they have a relationship where they're no longer happy in the way that they used to be, or they have a body that they don't like, they're maybe a little overweight, or they're just lethargic, they just feel tired, or frankly, they don't even know why, but they're just have a general sense of unhappiness. And and they kind of are attributing it to different things, but it's just pervasive. Then I would say right now, your biggest challenge is that you are focused on the things in your life that you do not like. The mother emotion of all of a good life is just one thing and it's gratitude. Yeah. It's gratitude. If you can get yourself into a state more often where you are grateful for what you have now, and then you feel into and experience a future state that has you feeling grateful, then automatically your life will start to shift into a positive direction. So one of the things that I do and that I did very early on in my career was I learned this process called scripting. And scripting is where you identify a future thing that you want, but then you write it in a notebook by hand over and over again as if it's already true. So literally when I was living in my car, Bronson, I was writing out into a notebook like at least 12 times Every single day, I easily receive $100,000 a month into my personal bank account. I easily receive $100,000 a month into my personal bank account. I don't know what I was thinking. I was a crazy person to be writing that. I wasn't even making $1,000 a month at that time. But I was just around, by the way, I was around people. I just met someone recently that was making $100,000 a month passively. He was a tech founder. He built his company and it was running more or less on its own. And I was like, crap. He's making hundred thousand dollars a month. That means that somebody makes hundred thousand dollars a month. I'm going to try and do that. And so yeah. I just started getting into that state. And at first, it was so awkward, Bronson. It felt so ridiculous. I felt like I was a, a liar, a charlatan, so to speak. Sure. But over time, I start writing it and I start feeling it as if it's true. I start visualizing that hundred thousand dollar number in my bank account. I start seeing my lifestyle. I'm traveling. Like I'm connecting with amazing people. I'm feeling good. And little by little. Within actually 18 months, that became true. Instead of making 100, I made $141,000 in June of 2017. The next month, I made $345,000. But I attributed that change, that radical change, to me believing that it was true before it was true and feeling the gratitude associated with it. So right now, I encourage you every morning, write out five things that you're grateful for that you already have, that already exist. It could be that it's the the feel of the wind on your face as you walk outside. It is one of your friends. It's just a dear friend that's always been there and that you feel good every time you talk to them. It could be your favorite shirt or your favorite pair of pants. Like you're so grateful for that. But just focus on things that you enjoy because when you get into that state of 
I feel rich now. And you also connect with a future that you want and you feel it that it's true now. Not that, oh, it'll be so great when, but oh, I feel so great that I already make $100,000 a month. I already invest into properties that pay me monthly. I already am around positive, encouraging, ambitious people. They already love me. I already hang out with them. And you get into that state and it feels like it's true now, like literally in your heart. You need to feel it in physically your yeah. heart area of your body. Then little by little, you will see your life change. And it'll change really fast in terms of your own sense of happiness. That will change yeah. really, really fast. But then your results will almost automatically start to change with them. You know, that, that I, I just, I can't, I don't even know what to say after that. It's, it's so good and it's so amazing. And you've been someone who's done it. Um, but yeah, when you manifest joy or you manifest gra gratitude leads to joy in your life, but it also welcomes in all these other things. Like if I stop being angry at the world and jealous of other people, depressed about my life, and I just come from a place of gratitude. And like you said, I easily uh, receive a hundred thousand dollars a month. It's amazing what you can create just simply by visualizing it, you know, the Napoleon Hill, whatever the mind can uh, conceive and believe it can achieve. Right. And so it's just that idea. And the same with me, it's like when I made the decision or I, I visualize this, these things happen. And that's, what's amazing when you get around people that are achievers is they're continually like visualizing new things. And so it's all possible. So, well, the, I, I'm so excited to have, it's so great to have you on the show, man. And we can talk for hours. I think we're definitely gonna have you back again in the future and just so appreciate all the value you bring. And I think the biggest thing uh, I got out is, is just the mindset that it takes and what's changed and just even spending time with you, how that is you, man, you, you do, you're walking gratitude, you walk around and you're, your joy and gratitude and you're bringing value and what, a, what a rich life, right. To have that type of presence where you go. So how can people get in touch with you? How can they hear about the resource you mentioned and follow what you're doing? Yeah. I, and, and by the way, just before I share that Bronson, I want to say I, I went on and on and on to my partner, to my friends about how wonderful it was to spend time with you in person last week, just how positive you are, how curious you are about life, about the world. I mean, you're just such an infectious presence. So for people that missed coming to your last event, they missed out and they better come to the next one or any of your meetups. Cause man, it is a joy. Like I felt so lifted being in your presence too. It's really, it's a really special community that you're building and a special life that you're building too, man. So I know. Thanks, Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. That means a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So for people that want to find out more and maybe they want to find their own off market deals, specifically in the medical space, you want to learn kind of step by step how you can vet those deals or just as a passive investor, you want to get access to different deals, then just go to Sterling's, just my first name, S T E R L I N G dot blog. And I'll walk you through again some of my past deals, some of my future deals, so that you can learn, get into the mindset of this. And even if you're, let's say that you're traditionally a multifamily investor or you invest in some of Bronson's other deals, which I'm sure are amazing, but you want to diversify into something that's a little bit more longer term in the medical space, we're able to capture some of those returns that early multifamily investors were able to get like 10 years ago, where it was even stronger than it is today. That's what medical more or less is now. It won't be that way forever. As I explained to you last week, like yeah. I believe in five years, it's going to be like multifamily is today. I feel like we're in a really unique golden age of it right now. And so anyway, if you want to get in and start to discover that and diversify into some of it, then just go to sterling.blog and there'll be more information for you there. Awesome, Sterling. Well, thanks so much, man. Again, always a rich experience. Look forward to seeing you again soon, man. And uh, thanks for being with us today. It's been a pleasure, brother. Thank you. Okay, so this episode is all about 10xing your mindset. And I love a few things here. He talks about gratitude, right? If you want to uh, change your life, come from a place of gratitude, you will experience so much joy. And I've, I've experienced this as well. My favorite author, her name is Brené Brown. And she talks about, if you wanna have more joy in your life, you have to be willing to be more grateful right? So if I want more joy, I want, we want more of the positive emotions. You've got to be grateful for what you have. I do a gratitude journal almost every morning and I'm grateful for the things in my life, the people in my life, the experiences of my life, my health, all those things. And that produces so much. And then when you come out in the world, it just, you bring this energy and you bring, people can be really drawn to you for that. So um, this was great. He talked about scripting, about even sharing almost like an affirmation where you write or you say, you visualize where you would like to be. So he mentioned, you know, I am I am someone who easily gets 100K in my bank account every month, right? And so as you say that, you, it's like you're changing the programming and it, this stuff really works. It sounds a little hocus pocus and we think of cheesy you know, affirmation stuff. And But to me, it's it's what's allowed me 
become a seven figure entrepreneur, 20 X my net worth in just a few years and be able to leave my corporate job just through simply visualizing and keeping those things right in front of me. So I hope this helped you. Also, the investing stuff is really interesting. Reach out to Sterling, uh, Sterling Capital. And um, again, thank you for taking the time to educate yourself. It's super inspiring to me. Love doing this, love interacting with you. And if you haven't checked out my new book called Fire Yourself, uh, it's on Amazon and uh, anywhere books are sold. It's also available on Audible. It's an audio book and I had a lot of fun writing it, but it talks about how to replace your working income with passive income in three years or less. So check it out. There's a link below in the description. And uh, you can also find out more on my website at Bronson Equity. Uh, we'll see you guys on the next show. You've been listening to the Mailbox Money Podcast. For more free resources, articles, and videos, go to bronsonequity.com. There you can download your copy of the special report, The Single Best Investment Strategy During and After a Pandemic. None of the information shared here is an offer to buy a specific investment, and this is for educational purposes only. Consult your financial, legal, and tax professionals and use your own common sense before making any investment decisions. Thanks for joining us, and be sure to tune in next time for more Mailbox Money.